Please welcome Fall Out Boy. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Welcome to the lounge. Welcome back to the lounge, I think, right? Thanks. Nice. <laughs> Playing the Metro tonight, sold out show. I don't know if you know this, but it's a very popular ticket. We've heard. It's a popular ticket. <laughs> people are calling in the hundreds. <laughs> and how mean we are, we're making people call on the phone to win these tickets. Right. Five nine one eighty three hundred. There we go. Right. <laughs> you know? I, 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 it was me when I was uh, 10 years old. You know, that, that's so. what I was going to ask. You know, up in Wilmette, calling, yeah. even Q101 back in the day Absolutely. to try to win. This is how yeah. we would win things. Exactly. I never won. You never won. <laughs> but a lot of people are, are, are excited to see you guys play the Metro tonight. We're excited to play the Metro tonight. It's been, it's been a while. The first time you went to the Metro as a fan, as a, uh, as a uh, going to a show at the Metro early on, before you're playing the Metro, have any memories of playing there or going there and seeing a band there? I think I saw the Smoking Popes there once uh, back in the day, maybe. Yeah. How we old were you then? Uh, I was 17. Uh, yeah, it's a long story. Okay. <laughs> 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 I've seen a lot of shows there, so it's hard. I kind of can't remember my first one. I one of the most eff like affecting ones was um, was uh, Get Up Kids and at the drive-in. I was I was in high school and I was like just blown away. And did that like flip the switch for you guys? Say, oh wow, this is what I want to do. I want to be on that. Not stage. necessarily, because I because I had seen you know um, we were all you know all of us were punk kids, so there would be like you know shows in basements and whatever. But there was something about the metro s seemed like this other level. You know, if you made it to the metro, that was like. It was like, ooh, you're you're probably in tune, <laughs> you yeah. know. It's like, and that first time you played the po metro, possibly, stage. possibly, <laughs> <laughs> possibly, and then and then we played the metro, not in tune. So <laughs> Do you remember that first show and what went wrong, perhaps? A lot of things went wrong, but you're so you know over the moon about it. It was it was crazy. I remember it was um it was one of those uh, free shows um, where you were allowed to give out tickets. And and Pete and I went into um, Kinko's, and you know, because because Metro said, you know, you give out as many tickets as you want, as you know, because you're this little band that no one's going to come see. Um, and uh, so we w so we printed as many as we could. And I remember we went to to like a Kinko's or whatever, and the lady was like, it was like, I see you counterfeiting tickets over there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> remember <Wow>. that? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> When's the last time you've been to a Kinko's? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, that's what we had to do back then. <laughs> well, congrats on the new album, which comes out on uh, March 24th. So much for Stardust. And uh, what we know of it so far, the two so second song was released today, uh, five years since the uh, last album was out. And uh, what, what led you to decide that now is the time to put out an album and put out a Fall Out Boy record? I mean, I feel like when we were, uh, during the pandemic, we were all, you know, with our families a bunch and uh i think we when we talked about it coming out of that like to leave and like uh leave your family it has to be for something important it can't just be like a whatever show or something like that and so we we, we kind of talked about making music that's important i think also for like a band like if we're t over 20 years in like there's like if you're just going to put out placeholder music you should just not put music out i think you know it just doesn't make sense and from being a fan of that and we also talked about, <coughs> you know, like Metallica, like a band like that has been a band for so long that people have all these different entry points to Metallica, right? So like your favorite album and my favorite album might be different, but we can debate it. And I think it is like debatable. And I think that Fall Out Boy has some of that. And we hadn't made a record that tried to encompass all of our eras, you know, like make the ultimate like Fall Out Boy uh, record. And uh, so I think that all kind of went into this one. And you had said, I in an interview that you watched that Metallica documentary. I did. That really resonated with you. Yeah, because I don't really know why. You know, like when you just get time completely wrong, I was like, oh, they've been a band for like 40 years. But I was like, no, they've been a band like kind of the exact same amount yeah. that we have. Yeah, it, it's weird because you remember thinking, watching that watching that movie, like, wow, you know, this is a band that's really been in it for a long time. And then you get there and you're like, oh, no. Like, we've been, we've been doing it that long. <laughs> you know, yeah. it kind of time flies, doesn't it? So, And the uh, similarities uh, with the approach with the uh, approach of the... Uh, the Foley album, which was uh, not as popular as the other albums, but something that was uh, significant, significant to you guys. 
Uh, talk about those parallels and the, and the similarities between the, this album and the Foley album. Well, so to me, the similarities are really only in methodology because you're not going to go back in time. You're not going to, you know, we're not even writing about the same kind of stuff. Like it's not, it's, I wouldn't say the record sounds like it or even feels like it. But when we made that record, we savored every minute of making it. Like we really, well, and I, I have to own up to it. I was a little bit like obsessed. I was in this like, I was down this spiral of like all these ideas of what it had to sound like. And I was very, very meticulous and picky and maybe a little bit un un unpleasant. Sorry guys. Um, because I just really wanted, to, I was like, no, you know. I forgive you. <laughs> thank you, Andy. <laughs> um, but I, I just really had to get this thing out. And um, there was, and Neil was so, Neil Avron who produced it was so amazing at um, guiding that, at, at, at you know, carefully, meticulously, you know, crafting a thing with you. And uh, I was like, what if we did something like that now when we're not all crabby at each other? And I got to say, <laughs> and I got to say, as not being Patrick, is that on Foley I Do it was a little bit of a kitchen sink record where Patrick would put everything into it. Yeah. And I think that you I've seen as you've grown as a writer that like you're able to s like rather than putting everything into it, you start with like finer ingredients or something. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Yeah, and totally. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I noticed from this experience. Anybody ever seen Walk Hard? Uh, yeah. Okay, you know, yeah. you know the bit where he gets to the didgeridoo, like where he's like, you know, that where he just goes overboard, overboard. That was kind of foley for me, where I was like, I wrote like eighty song ideas for that record, and you know, just all of these things. I just went so far overboard because I was like, following, I don't know, and um, and I was like, what if I made, what if. What if my contribution There's to this record was like a little bit more focused? <laughs> <laughs> There's 20 pounds in a 10-pound <laughs> bag, and I think we can get a little more in. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Well, that comes with experience and, and wisdom, you know, years later. Do you think people look back at it now and appreciate it more, appreciate that record more? Clearly, I, th I think that that's the case. Um, but I also think it's hard to, it's, it's very deceptive to like look back at things because Music was so different then, right? Like, it w like Lady Gaga had kind of exploded, and Four on the Floor was kind of everywhere. Dance music, you know, and and it was hard to exist. It was like the f one of the first moments where it was like kind of hard to exist as a, a rock band, you know, and in that landscape. And so, making a weird record makes it even weird. You know, it's like you would have to time travel back to like kind of feel the way it felt. Yeah. Well, and to kind of the thing Pete was saying earlier too. I mean, there's so many different entry points for people. So I think. For somebody, that's their favorite record. You know, for somebody, that was the first record that they fell in love with of ours. For somebody, it was Mania. For somebody, it was you know American Beauty, American Psycho. So, so it's hard to like pick and go. I think it's really easy as a band to lose sight of that, to lose sight of the fact that like all of these, they're not really yours anymore after they're out in the world. You know, mm -hmm. so your opinions on them kind of don't really matter, do they? You know, it's and like they change, like a like yeah. a bottle of wine or something, right? It just changes as time. You know, they just, always yeah. get better. Our it reminds me always <laughs> get better. It this one's going bad. It's skunky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it reminds me, since you work with Rivers a bunch, that it reminds me of the Pinkerton album. You know, at the time, people didn't care for the Pinkerton album. Which that is so, which is, because uh, I remember that. I remember listening to it on Q101 and being obsessed with the record. Um, and Love uh, the Good Life. Yeah, uh, amazing song. One of my favorite songs. Yeah. Uh, El Scorcho. Yeah. It was a great, ra it, had, it had a great thing. It was a great record, but then... Yeah, at the time, people were like, ooh, you know. It's not the Blue Album. Yeah, and then in retrospect, that's one of the most beloved records, you know, so. Right. You know, there's this renewed interest in, like, the uh, 2K emo and pop punk mm -hmm. sound, and uh, you guys are certainly part of that and certainly part of the history of that. But I think, uh, Patrick, you had said in an article that uh, you weren't necessarily embraced by that scene fully well, at I the time. Well, I just mean that, you know, okay, so Chicago had a, a thriving and very defined emo scene and by that I mean like I mean like Midwest emo was a thing right so when we started we weren't that and none of none of the bands now that get called emo were that and we all knew that like it wasn't like we were all different that we were like a hardcore band that played pop punk or something I don't really know what we called ourselves we didn't have a name for it um, and em emo existed and wasn't mean to us but they weren't like you know I also think that we like weren't trying to enter into that scene. We yeah. kind of created our own scene out in the, the, the suburbs and just played at whatever. We would just play until a fire marshal would show up, basically. <laughs> that was like kind of the rule of the, the, yeah. the, sh the <laughs> early shows. And 
it was, and we've talked about it with this this record. There's like a bit of uh, Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Like you and I, and I really mean this for anybody who's playing music or making art. Like you just got to get out and like make it and create it and find other people that are like minded and like make your own scene. That's like what it is. You know what I mean? And it's less about like not being a part of someone else's and just kind of creating your own universe. Well, and I guess what I was trying to say, tying into that, what I was what I was trying to say is that there really wasn't a scene to be a part of at the time, you know? So like not so I think in retrospect it's very easy to say like oh all these bands were a thing, but it's like at the time you know, we were kind of just figuring it out, you know, we were just right. kind of making it up as we went along, you know. Well, I think now it's more of I think maybe 15 almost 20 years ago it was like one lane or the other. Mm -hmm. Like you were either this kind of band or this kind of band. And we were and never that. No. You know what I mean? Like no, we were just like that's like people are like, why is Jay Z on the record? Or why right. you know like why are you working with the guy that did? Why like did you do a song at Wine Club? Yeah, and pretty and awesome I, song. And it's just kind of how we we have really interest different tastes and we have really different influences and so I, I love like because I, I'll see my kids listening to music now and it's just like kind of all over the place. They yeah, just it's fluid. Like, yeah, and they like what they like and it's less yeah. about like this is this genre and this is and and it's. Really cool. It's really cool to see. Yeah. What did you uh, did you learn anything or glean anything from uh, going on the Hello Mega tour with the guys from Green Day and Weezer? You work with the Rivers. You learn anything from those elder statesmen, if you will. Uh, what did we learn from those guys? They, I will say, um, Green Day. I was surprised at the way that they interact as people because I think the longer you go on as a band, it's really easy. You hear these stories about these famous bands that, like, you know, they don't. They they're business associates at this point. They're not. We'd like be sitting with a them. cup to the door, trying to like <laughs> catch new Green Day songs, yeah. and put them out before they put them out. You know. Yeah. And we would just hear them laughing with each other, and we're like, "What are they doing? <laughs> what, what is uh, happening? So I, like that, <laughs> I need to know this now." I like that pivot from a joke into a reality. No, they they really they really get on with each other. They really hang out with each other, which is kind of one of those things that um, it's silly because you don't you kind of forget, but it's really important in a band. It's like to be buddies, to like hang out with each other. And we and we, we always have, but I think it's sometimes you, you know, you get kind of carried away in whatever you're doing and it's like, it's nice to like, yeah, we should all go out to dinner. Like little things like that because it's, again, it's very silly, but it, it pays dividends later. You know, right. you guys, like it, you're in it together, you know? And my biggest, I think, or one of the biggest takeaways uh, was that people are like asking us about when, what we were thinking about when we made this record. And I thought a lot about like when us and My Chemical Romance and Panic and Paramore were all kind of uh, going to TRL for the first time, I think Green Day could have easily just gone gone and been like, we'll just make some like music like this and we'll just, you know, and instead they made like an insane record, like an insane rock record and Boulevard Broken Dreams and, you know, like right. it, and, and in a weird way it was like adjacent to us, but you felt that it was like spiritually bigger than all of it. Like they'd been doing it since the 90s, you know, or whatever. And, and I think that that really the idea of that of being adjacent to what's happening right now but not going and trying to like rehash something mm. really informs yeah. this record. Yeah, there's a big difference between following your inspiration and and follow and and being um inspired by the energy of a thing that's happening and you know being your dad putting on, you know, like the putting on the cool t-shirt and being like, "Hey guys." <laughs> you know. <laughs> like. And plus, you know, you're I, I would think authenticity is just so important now in 2023 where you know, your, your fans know if it's real and you're, you're connected to your art. Yeah, and I think in a time where complete inauthenticity is kind of everywhere and prevalent yeah. everywhere, like, you know, like with FOMO and, like, I, I think that in any kind of art, being authentic uh, cuts through a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, we made these people call to win <laughs> tickets. Wow. You know, Thank you on guys. the phone. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> what can you tell us about, you know, the album comes out in two months? You've released a second song today. Uh, what can you, I know the, the, the rollout's been cryptic with the hints, like Field of Dreams. I saw something on Twitter today, the, the clue is at, at the actual Field of Dreams in Iowa. Mm, yeah. uh, is that something that you guys come, to get, come together and uh, hash out ideas? Is it, is it Andy, is it your ideas to really get no. these really cool, clever <laughs> clue clues? You know, like I find out when you do so. Okay. <laughs> so, so what can you tell us without telling us anything? Or I'll give you, I like in the, in the uh, Love from the Other Side video when, when Grandpa Pete is pulling out the book from the bookshelf and you see the other books on the shelf and you see the titles. If you look closely, there are like references to books and bands. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we, we, we always will make like some subtle, like 
if it looks too much like a clue, it's probably not actually a clue. Okay. So like, yeah, there's like just that. head nods to bands. Um, like Catch 182. Yeah, those are just like honestly. Good Charlotte's Web. I saw yeah, there. they're just you know friends or whatever. Fun. Um, but as far as the album, um, I don't know. I I would say what could we say about the album? So like to me, okay, I'll say something about the album is that. Uh, it's like a two, like, you know, we have this face, this smiley, frowny kind of face, and the album itself kind of has two sides to it. Like, there's this side, that's this speech that um, that Ethan Hawke gives in Reality Bites that where he talks about, you know, he never knew his dad, and then while his dad was dying, he gives him this pink seashell, and it's got all the answers, and he's like, well, I guess there are no answers, and it's kind of like this nihilism, right? Like, it's like the nothing matters, so I'll just do whatever, you know? And, and so that's one side of the record. But I think we thought that you've heard that before or, you know, we've seen that kind of art before. So we also, the, the other side of it is kind of more the field of dreams. And that's where Kevin Costner, and these are two movies you should watch even if you don't like sports or don't right. like the 90s. They're both great. Uh, uh, in, in that movie, he he's a, lives on a farm in Iowa and he just talks about how his dad, like he never got to know him before he was old and his dad never did anything crazy. So he just does one kind of crazy thing where he builds this field. And that's the whole thing of like breaking out of that nihilism is like you have to do something crazy. You gotta do something like you gotta just go for it. You know what I mean? Right. Like you have to just do it. Right. Especially if it's in your heart. Because totally. you know you get one turn at life. Totally. And you know, and when you're sitting at the end of your life, you wanna look back and go, Oh, I should have done that. And this. it's short and it's long. You know what I mean? It's right. both. Right. Uh, and and I kinda just wanted to add too, you know, because you were talking about there's this there's this groundswell of uh, of you know, renewed appreciation for a lot of the stuff that happened and you know the the I guess the you know early two thousands or whatever uh, musically I didn't know that I didn't know that when I started writing the record um, so it's definitely not um, it's definitely more related like I wanted to make sure that it's a record that you know we're still the band that made Mania five years ago you know it's still it's still we're still that band. But I wanted to make something in a very different way. Like I wanted to to take our time. So you know, the it's funny because you know you look at it and there's a five year gap. But we were working on the record for for a lot of it, a lot more than we've worked on on the record. So I'd say more than anything, I just I can't wait for people to hear it because we savored it for so long. Like I you know really put a lot into it. So and how has your uh, film scoring and uh, TV scoring work? Does that translate into the new album somehow? There's some. Yeah, influences? yeah, definitely. Um, it was it was really different because this time around, um, I didn't have to like you know I, I was always relying on somebody else's expertise. I would like hum a thing and be like, I don't know, and then maybe the strings could do like this. Mm -hmm. and, and this time, I was able to you know I was writing out. There's a lot of there's there's a decent amount of of strings and horns and orchestration and stuff. Um, Acro across the record. I mean, there's a little bit on Love from the Other Side you can hear, but... We rented the Arclight in um, Los Angeles, LA. and we just played E.T. continuously for like a thousand days in silence, and he just wrote the record <laughs> to that. So <laughs> it's... I don't know. Oh. It's pretty good. I like that visual. <laughs> Is that the next clue? Is that the next clue? Is that the next seashell clue? I'm trying to follow right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very lost. I'll be honest. Well, the video that you released today with, with Rivers, if you haven't seen it yet, no spoilers... It starts at Pink's, which is right a couple blocks from that. It location, is. It was, so. it was convenient for hmm. Patrick. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because because uh, apparently I was living at the at the ArcLight watching ET. So. And another no spoilers. You own stunts. You own stunts. I I I, that, I don't know if that was a joke. I didn't <laughs> do all of my stunts. I don't know about these guys. There's. A I can't remember. I right. I was kind of. Patrick. I am. Less is more, Patrick. Less is more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a stunt that. Got what you're saying, and not so you a, did a stunt. A, there's a stunt that got cut, and I was kind of bummed. Oh. All right, well, get well. online and watch. It's like Tom Cruise does his own stunts, baby. There you go. <laughs> I'm also very short. Yeah. So. <laughs> the show tonight at the Metro, very, very exciting for Chicago and these fans and the fans that really have been just calling for these tickets. It's an excitement that uh, thank you for bringing it back to our medium, our radio medium. You know, it's really exciting to just see the and hear the enthusiasm and the despair and, <laughs> and the pain I, I of have people to winning tickets. I, I have to say that um, as as an artist, if anyone here is uh, plays music or anyone who's listening plays music, hearing your song on the radio is a really – the way it's compressed and the way it sounds and the, the DJ talking into it is like one of the uh, – it, it, it feels like you baked the cake and somebody was like – came in the shop one day and ordered it. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. this feels so, it, it feels very that cool. That thing you do moment. 
Totally. Yeah. And it sounds good on this end. Is that a clue? I don't know, is it? <laughs> Maybe it is. Um, you're looking back in a year, say you're, you're back here in a year. You guys have key cards, right? You can come back anytime. No? Oh, cool. Okay. You're looking back in a year. You're going to say 2023 was the year we accomplished blank. Oh, wow. Um, what do you hope to accomplish? Like, hmm. Hmm. What should we accomplish this year? <laughs> what, what can we do? I don't what know. Can okay, we think about that for a it's second. Too big. Maybe I'll question. finally figure out Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about since another clue that I saw. I remember seeing this a, a while ago. Celebrity Family Feud with Weezer. You guys make it to the final round, and you, Patrick, month that begins with A. I don't. Re I barely you remember. You that blanked episode. on it. And was that the one? It's the month you were born in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but was that was that the one with um, Steve Harvey? Yeah, host Steve that Harvey, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in between takes, he would like because when you're up there, you're probably distracted by his mustache. No, he just yeah. says crazy stuff, and every everything he says, I'd be like, "What?" And then there's a question, and I was like, <laughs> "Wait, what? Did, are we, he, we're not okay." He's one <laughs> of the funniest of all time. He's so funny. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of a, and I'm I'm also you know I'm um. I'm a little bit of an anxious guy, if that's not obvious. So, yeah. so it didn't really, you know, me under pressure on, on uh, national TV, yeah. that's, a, that's a way to really get good answers out of me. We still love you, man. Uh, it's, it's really hard to come up with stuff. It's also like show. it's yeah. very easy when you're like the next person. You're like, just say it. And then, but then when it's your turn, it's – I would say as far as accomplishments, I don't know if this is an accomplishment, but there's a lot of places that we, uh, since the pandemic, have – not being able to return to and, and i would say i would hope in 2023 that we're gonna get around to the we've we got a lot of friends a lot of fans around the world that we haven't really like gotten to play for in a long time and so i hope we right. get to do that and what are locally here too like I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure the ticket demand for your friends and family <laughs> here has been uh, a little high <laughs> yeah i thought it was funny because metro holds how many people and like and like yeah and like you know, between family and friends already, it's like, well, yeah. we're gonna, we we'll probably have to just come back at some point. <laughs> I think you know? it came up on my Facebook memories. I think yesterday when you guys played uh, Lincoln Hall in 2015, and I think I was sitting next to you on the balcony. Next, was it your parents? Were your parents probably, there? Yeah, yeah, my I parents think it was your yeah. parents that were there, and that came up as a, just a random memory. That was that eight eight years ago. Yeah, yes. crazy. So that was. So you guys are back. This yeah. is Fallout Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. We're gonna take some pictures and uh, one more time for Fallout Boy. <laughs> <laughs>